There you go. <coughs> All right, anyway, I'm glad to see you. Um, I, I would like, I would like to teach you something that I wish somebody would have taught me. <clears throat> I went to college and I had never heard of this before. And the only good news is I like math. Uh, I actually took five classes of math in high school and I didn't fail either. <clears throat> so I actually doubled up in math. I, I mentioned I like math, but I also like science. But to me, they were different. But <clears throat> um, I was never taught this mathematical tool. And it's a thinking tool. <clears throat> and if you allow this, if you allow me to teach this to you, you will be able to think better. You'll be able to solve more problems than you have before. And if you ever take any science class that has a mathematical basis to it, whether it's chemistry or physics, um, I've even had people tell me on the SAT they've used it. So I want you to get your full attention and I want you to say, I'm gonna learn this. I'm gonna learn this. And you don't have to learn it right away. You just have to eventually learn it. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how it works. So we're gonna do what we call type one and type two and type three and then um, type four. And some of them are a little bit harder, but not a lot harder, it's just a little bit harder than others. And then eventually what I want you to do <clears throat> is um, I want you to be able to show me that you can do it. And so the way I do that is you will have a homework assignment that you take home with you. <clears throat> and uh, that'll be, I'll give that to you on Wednesday. And then you also will do a thing called certification. So certification means uh, I walk around the room and if you want to use your notes, you want to, it's not a quiz. It's just like you work out this problem, you show your work, you put the answer down, I walk around, you say, can you check mine? I'll check number one and number two. I check it, and if I put my initials on there, I said, you know what, you're certified. I know that by yourself, you can do those problems. You'll get points for the homework. You get points for being certified. <clears throat> and then I'll give you a quiz. Now tell me whether or not you know how to do this without using your notes and that kind of thing there. Get that? And that'll be a very short unit. Should be this week. I'll probably have it done made by Thursday. <clears throat> and then we'll start the next chapter, uh, which is actually on the um, protons, neutrons, electrons, ions. That's kind of neat. And that's our next stepping stone in chemistry, like right that. All right, so everybody have a calculator? <coughs> All right, well, here we do. We are going to, uh, I had not started this at all. Did I, on last Friday, did I start this at all? I just kind of sort of told you we were going to do it. <clears throat> all right, let me get my thing started here. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> and the camera will come on here just a minute. Also, because I'm uh, recording these, if you want to go home and say, I'd like to look at that <coughs> video again, you could even do that. <coughs> okay. <coughs> All right, ready? <coughs> now, I want you to take notes on this. And what I'll do is I'll even give you, after you take notes today, I'll, I'll print off for you, and on Wednesday, I'll give you a review sheet of what I did, and then you can also have your own notes, right? <clears throat> this is called a factor label, and um, if you become an engineer, you will use the fancy name dimensional analysis. <clears throat> dimensional analysis sounds very scientific. It's like an engineer would say it, but uh, almost everybody in chemistry would call it factor label method. You say, well, what is it for? <clears throat> it's for converting. Now, <clears throat> do you remember early in the year, remember how you had to make that little stair step? Remember how you put, uh, you had all the prefixes on there? And remember if you went from kilo to milli, your finger went six to the right? I'm looking at everybody's faces, right? Everybody with me? And <clears throat> all you had to do is move the decimal six to the right. <clears throat> that was a type of converting. That was called metric to metric converting, that was stair step. Now, stair step <clears throat> works because it's all based on power of the 10, and every time you move a decimal, that's a power of 10. Now, this can do everything that that can do, can do a thousand times more than that. This can convert anything into anything that can be converted. <clears throat> if you wanted to convert <clears throat> um, miles to kilometers, we could do that. You want to uh, exchange, how about euros to dollars? We could do that. It can convert pretty much anything that can be converted. Okay, come on. Hello.
Okay. All right. Thanks. <coughs> and if, uh, if you, it, wait till you're feeling better. When you're feeling better, then you can just kind of watch the, the video. All right. Um, oops. Sorry. All right. I'm sorry. Not feeling well. All right. Bye. <coughs> All right. Ready? So <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a problem. Uh, let's try this one. 18 donuts <coughs> equals how many dozen <coughs> donuts? And I know there are two ways to spell donuts. I like to spell them this way. <coughs> now, <coughs> I want you to look at me and I want you to think today. I want you to be very engaged today. I'm getting ready to show you this very powerful thinking tool. And I show you this problem here. What are you thinking? Be honest with me. Be honest. The first problem I want you to do, what do you think about it? Really difficult? No. Does everybody already know the answer? Okay. So <clears throat> let me ask you this. Why would I want to teach you? Why would I want to start with the first problem to show you a, a, a problem you already know the answer to? Because I'm not concerned with the answer right now. I'm concerned with teaching you another way to get this answer. If you will learn how to get this answer a different way, I will show you how to do this problem here. We're gonna do this one in just a minute. <clears throat> now, do you know how to do that one? But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to help you. If you'll learn how to do this one another way, you'll be able to do this one today. You'll be able to do this problem today, okay? And you can do even more difficult problems than this. Okay, the first thing I want you to do is, <clears throat> whenever you're doing factor label, step one is always the same. Step one is to write down the given. <clears throat> now, let's go over here in this problem, and the given is 18 donuts. Now, I'm gonna do something that's a little unusual, and I'm going to put a B. I'm going to have you put a G here just so you know that that's the given, okay? <clears throat> now, uh, why did I put that over one? Because in factor label, the labels are absolutely important. There are numbers involved, and we will use a calculator, but not unless the labels make sense. If the labels don't make sense, we're not going to pick up a calculator. And so what I need to know is, did you know that 18 was the same as 18 over 1? I bet you did. I bet your math teacher says three is the same as three over one. You knew that. But I bet they never told you that donuts was the same as donuts over one. And the reason you need to know that is because I need to know that that's up here in the numerator and that's in the numerator. Okay? Step two. Step two is... Step two is to multiply the given... by a conversion factor. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> remember, when, you're, when you first start learning something, there's always a little bit of vocabulary, right? The given, I bet you knew what that was. Now it says here, multiply the given by a conversion factor. I'm even going to write CF here to remind me this is a conversion factor. Now, a conversion factor is a ratio. Now, where do we get these? Do I have a pocket full of conversion factors? No, I don't. I have to make them. Now, how do you make a conversion factor? You build them from equivalence. Now, I want to show you something. <clears throat> this is my problem, but I'm not going to use that. But I want to know, do you understand that I have to get rid of the label called donuts and I have to replace it with dozen? So tell me something you know about donuts and dozen that's always true. No matter what problem I give you, what's something that's always true? <clears throat> One dozen donuts equals what? What is equivalent? Say it. Twelve donuts. Everybody see that? <clears throat> now, this is called an equivalent statement. It means something equals something. You have these all over the place. Three feet equals one yard, don't you? We have all kinds of equivalent statement. Now, 
Here's the hard part. <clears throat> I have to use this to build a conversion factor. Now, here's the easy part. A lot of people make this hard, but it's not. What label has to, you have to get rid of in order to get to dozen? Don't you have to get rid of donuts? But donuts are in a numerator. What could you multiply by to get rid of donuts in a numerator? <clears throat> Something had donuts down there. And what would you like to replace the label donuts with? What do you think? That one? Would that work? <clears throat> All right, now, this is where I need you to pay attention. Who says? Who says you can go around multiplying things by weird-looking things? Who says that? Is that illegal? Thank you. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and find the numbers that go here. Uh, this thing here has to equal this thing here. Okay, so let's go down here. What do you see? One dozen, one dozen, one dozen is the same as what? So that, that's what told me there are actually two conversion factors I could have built. Watch. I could have put one dozen over 12 donuts or that could be a conversion factor or i could have put 12 donuts over one dozen now again one more time how do i know which one of those i can build two different conversion factors from this equivalent how do you know which one to use and this is where you have to pay attention i like math but i have to get let go of the numbers for a minute forget the numbers what label has to be canceled out donuts that's what forces donuts to be down there and then dozen will be up here. And I just put the equivalent. And do not, do not go up here and use 18. I want, I want equivalents that are always true. Always. See that? Now, <clears throat> my question to you is, do you happen to know in math anything except for zero, anything divided by itself equals what? In math, anything. What is, uh, what's 24 divided by 24? What's negative five divided by negative five? Except for zero, what is anything divided by itself in math? One. Well, you said this was equal to that, didn't you? If it's not zero, anything divided by itself is equal to what? One. <clears throat> it doesn't look like one, does it? That's one. This has to be one. Here's what math says also. Math says anything times one you can put an equal sign there and it equals the original number anything times one and even zero and you can say it equals the original number so i can actually put equals here because this times one is going to be equal to whatever it is now here's what's kind of weird when i do factor label if this is a five point problem i will give you one point for the answer one that's all if you show me you know how to do factor label, I'll give you four. If you do factor label correctly and get the wrong answer because you put in the calculator wrong, I'll still give you four of the five points. That's how serious I am about learning this method. You get it? Now, part of it is to write the given. You get points for writing the given. You get points for writing the right conversion factor. And with a single line, watch now, I will give you points for crossing out factoring out labels you factor out labels get that <clears throat> now i want you to look up here what is the only label left that's not canceled is that what you want if the only label left is not being canceled out and that's what you want then you put equals that's the only time you put equals and now i want to show you something with a calculator that everybody should know but they don't okay get your calculator out <clears throat> now, normally, if you were in middle school, here's what they would do. They would say, multiply, multiply, write down, multiply, multiply, write down, then divide. That is, you would do not, there's no way a 10th grader should still be doing that. Here's what happens. <clears throat> Multiplying by one does not change anything. Dividing by one will not change anything. So just don't use those, okay? So yeah, 18, see it's in a numerator. 
18 is in the denominator divided by 12. Let's do it right now. 18 divided by 12. <clears throat> now you get 1.5. Yes? Okay. <clears throat> now, what I want to show you is you already knew the answer was 1.4 your star, didn't it? But I want to show you that if you understand what I was talking about, where do these come from? Where does that come from? What's this? What's that? If you understand that, you'll be able to do this problem right here. Okay, are you ready? Okay. All right. Go ahead. Do what you're supposed to do. Let's see what happens. Do this problem here and see what happens. Do what you're supposed to do. How you doing? <coughs> I have one dollar left. <clears throat> do what you're supposed to do. How you doing? Waiting for somebody to do what they're supposed to do. First person that does what they're supposed to do, I'll give you a dollar. Yes. Here you go. <clears throat> That's for you. <clears throat> There's no way anybody in here could do this problem right now. When I said do what you're supposed to do, you should have raised your hand and said, how do you know how many atoms there are in that? What, did you, what are you lacking? What do you don't have here that you had up here? It starts with an E. Equivalence. Equivalence. That's what you need, isn't it? <clears throat> So let me show you how to get equivalence for this kind of a problem, all right? Even though this is in chapter 7 in your book, I'm going to teach you a little piece of chapter 7 today. And here's what it is. We're going to start out with a thing called a mole. Now, a mole is a really big idea in chemistry, and it's called a mole. You don't need to know what it is. It still is going to work. It's still going to work, even though you don't know what a mole is. One mole of sulfur equals... Now, if I had said one dozen, the answer would be 12 donuts, right? But a mole is much bigger than a dozen. And here it is. It's this weird number. Whoa, look at that thing. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. Now, look at my labels, okay? That's important. One, one mole of sulfur is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. Matter of fact, I'll do another one. One mole, and we're not doing carbon today, but one mole of carbon, guess how many atoms of carbon that is? If I said one dozen sand grains, you how many is that? You say 12. Are you kidding? Hey, one dozen baseballs, how many is that? Uh, 12. Everybody knows that a dozen is 12. Well, guess in the chemistry world, everybody knows what a mole is. How many is a mole of anything? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon. 
Now, <clears throat> we're not done yet, not yet, because there's another one we need, and I'll show you how to do this, right? <clears throat> it's kind of like M A G, moles, atoms, and grams. Everybody see that? Now, right here, I need grams. Now this, I will give you a periodic table. If you happen to bring your book with you today, you'll see on the periodic table, look for sulfur. And do you see sulfur has a, there's a big old 16 there. We're not gonna use that number. We're gonna use the other number. What's the decimal number that you see associated with sulfur? You see where it says 32.06? Okay, that goes right here, 32.06. But what do you put after that? Very important, grams of sulfur. What if we were doing carbon? One mole of carbon equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon equals how many grams of carbon would be a mole? What do you think? Look in your periodic table. If you have your book with you, a periodic table, um, right here, how many, how many grams of carbon does it take to make a mole? Zach, what do you think? You, you can see that, can't you? Hard to see. Daniel, can you see it? 12.01? Yep. <clears throat> now, so now, good question. Now do the problem. Now do the problem. Every one of you should have been able to do this. 50 grams of sulfur over one. That's my given. Every one of you should have done this. You should put grams of sulfur down there. That's something you could have done without any help. <clears throat> but since Layla asked, now Layla, ready? What label had to go away? This one, right? What label would you like to replace it with? Look on the original problem. Mm -hmm. Let's put that right here. Everybody with me? I watch the labels, it will force the numbers to go where they belong. Now look at your equivalents. Look down here. Which one says grams of sulfur? Watch now, I'll act real silly. No. No. Yes. Now the reason I act silly is because whenever I do this, I don't know how people do this. Why would you put anything besides 32.06 there? 32.86 is grams, isn't it? That's what I'm going to put there. 32.06. Now I'm looking for atoms. Atoms of sulfur. Did you say atoms? No. No. Yes. Yes. I'm putting that number right here. All right. Now we're almost ready. What's what I'm going to do now? You get points for doing this. Watch. You get points for crossing it out with a single line. What's the only label left? What is it? Atoms of sulfur. Atoms of sulfur, right? Is that what I want? That's the only time I put an equal sign when I know I'm done. And I'm going to put my label here. Oh, by the way, I'm going to do you a great favor. If you ever leave a label out, I'll take off a point. Every time you leave a label off, if it's in the answer, I'll take off a point. And then you'll learn to take care of your labels. You get that? I wish somebody would have done that to me when I was in high school. I remember going to college. I didn't know factor label in college. And <clears throat> I didn't even know the labels. Nobody ever made, they never took points off for me in high school. That was a big mistake. Because I, I had a lot of things I didn't know what I was talking about. I could do the math, but then I make mistakes. I didn't know what the mistake was. <clears throat> All right, so what are you going to do now? You're going to pick up your calculator. <clears throat> now watch. Here's how you do this one. Big boys and girls. This is the way the big boys and girls do it. Ready? 50. Whoops. <clears throat> Ready? <clears throat> 50 times. Now, do you know how to do 6.02 times 10 to the? You put 6.02 times 10. And don't you have a button that looks like this? Don't you have a button? Does your teacher call that a carrot? What's your math teacher call that? When you raise something to an exponent, what's your math teacher call that? Did she say a carrot button? Okay. Okay, wait a minute. Ready? <clears throat> so you put 50 times 
6.02 times 10 carat 23 and then you put divided by 32.06 I only press enter once I press enter now um, let's see um, Madison can you tell me what your calculator says for this one do you need a calculator? I don't have an answer to say. Say what? I'm supposed to say zero. Okay. All right. What do you, what do you have? I like, I did it, but then I, when I put the carrot, I don't know how to get back down. Oh, good question. Oh, 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 thank you very much. Thanks for telling that. Did you have 6.02 times 10 to the carrot? Now put a 23. Now here's the, here's where the calculator messes you up a little bit. When it says, when you put carrot 23, they think you might want to put some more numbers in the exponent, but you don't. So use your arrow, use your arrow key to jump down, to jump back down. Yeah, the, the right arrow. So let's start again. Everybody put in there uh, 50. Okay, hey, that was a great question you had. Let me, let me clear this a couple times. Here we go. So you put 50, 50 times 6.02 times 10, this little guy right here, to the 23. Now, again, they think you're going to add some more to your exponent, but you're not. So you use this little arrow key here, and you jump down. And then what do we do now? They say divided by, what is it? Divided by what? 32.06. Okay, now the calculator says this, and I'm not going to write this down. 9.388646, blah, blah, blah. Then over here, there's an E. That's important. Does everybody see an E? Kyle, do you see an E? Okay, what's E mean? Let me put your mask back on, okay? What does E mean? Uh oh all right it means times 10 to the okay it means times 10 to the it says e23 everybody see that now <clears throat> i'm going to show you another little trick with your calculator now <clears throat> go right here and yours is probably newer than this one but some everybody has a mode button look for m-o-d-e does everybody have a mode button is yours a regular button or is it a second function does everybody know how to do the mode now watch what happens when i press mode mode what's flashing right now what's flashing normal i want sci because it's going to put all my answers in scientific notation see where it says sci is flashing so we're going to enter that and now from now on everything you do is going to be in scientific notation you get that when i do factor label because i don't want everybody to have the same answer i'm going to make you round it your answer to three sig figs in scientific notation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enter, um, I'll clear that, and I'm gonna enter that, and notice what it does for me automatically. It says, as a matter of fact, the number is already that big. It says 9.3, and I'm gonna change that eight to a nine because the fourth sig fig, the fourth figure says the nine, eight's gonna move up to a nine. So I'm gonna put three, or 9.39, 9.39 and then what's that e stand for again what does e stand for times 10 to the times 10 to the 23 now if you you right now have no use for this you will later when you get to chapter 7 where you'll have to convert grams into atoms or you might gr convert grams into moles here's another thing that people your age have trouble with they have trouble because you use grams and atoms and you think there's something wrong because you didn't use moles. Can I tell you something? You only use two of these at a time, don't you? You'll always have one of these you don't use. Now, another problem might say change grams into moles. Then I'll use this one and this one, and then I won't use this guy. Are you with me? Don't worry that I didn't use one of those three things. All right. 
Now, what I'm going to do now is, uh, are you a little bit better in here? Now, let's say you go back to your math class and everything's in scientific notation. It says, oh, no, what is Mr. Feeney? Ah, okay. How do you get back to normal? How would it get back to normal where the numbers look like 513? What do you think? Too quiet. Come on. You're too quiet. You mode. mode. And, then and, right, and right now, SCI is highlighted. And we don't want SCI. What do we want? So we've got left arrow. Ah, now normal. I'll say enter that. And now everything will be like that. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go back to mode and we're going to do SCI because the next problem I want you to do, um, and I want you to go ahead and, um, and all your answers will be in scientific notation. All right, are you ready? The problems you just did, I call them type one. Type one uh, simply means that you only had to use one conversion factor to get the problem done. Is that pretty easy? Okay, so let's go to type two. Let's go to type two. Oh, you know what? Um, do you want to do one more practice problem with type one? Let's do, let's do one more practice problem with type one, okay? All right. All right, you can say you go around the world and everybody, some, sometime around the world, uh, somebody might ask you about how much you weigh and the entire world uses kilograms except for you. Now, you can put your own weight and I'll show you how to convert it to kilograms. Or you can put somebody else's weight and convert it to kilograms. You get that? If you don't want to use your own weight, if you do, that's fine. Okay, so the question is, put something down here. Let's say some of you weigh 150 pounds, okay? And we want to change that to kilograms. How do we do that problem? What do you need? What do you need before you can do this problem? I can write the given, can I? I can write the given, can I? And can I multiply it by a conversion factor that has pounds in it? That's what everybody in this room should be able to do without my help. But now what do you need? You said it once, I'm gonna let somebody else say it. What do you need? Julie, what do you need? I can't finish this unless I give you what? What's it called? What do you call it? Equivalence. You know why they're called equivalents? Because they're things that equal each other. One kilogram is equal to 2.2 pounds. Okay? All right, now go ahead and you should be able to do the problem. Set it up, calculate it, um, go ahead and put your answer down and put it in three sig fig scientific notation, okay? You can do it without scientific notation and then write it down without scientific notation, then write it with scientific notation, okay? Now this is our first day. This is the day you ask questions, you get it? If you're gonna ask questions, it's today. You can ask them any day. But you have a lot of questions today. Like for example, did you know why I put that down there? Because I have to cancel that out, don't I? What would you like to replace it with? Well, the problem wants me to change the kilograms and so yeah, it'd be nice if I could change the kilograms. Well, do you know what equals what in kilograms and pounds? Not here, not from the problem. Where do you get it from? Equivalence. I will give this to you. I will give this to you. Did you know that one kilogram is 2.2 pounds? I will give this to you. You get it? Now, who goes where? What number goes down here? What number goes here? Please don't mess this part up. What number, how many pounds equals how many kilograms? 2.2 what? Eyes up here. Everybody's up here. 2.2 what? pounds then put it there 2.2 pounds is the same as what one kilogram now watch me cancel my look at that whoa, all right cancel those out whoa the only thing left is what then i'm going to put equals because see now go ahead and do your calculator thing let's do it without scientific notation then we'll change it to scientific notation okay if you do go around the world and somebody asks you how much you weigh uh, you're going to tell them, I weigh this many kilograms. And then we'll put in scientific notation. 
Now, again, if you're not 150 pounds, you, you shouldn't have 150 on there. You should have your weight or somebody else's weight or something like that. All right. May, did you get yours done yet? Did you use, I don't want to get too personal. Did you use your own weight? You don't weigh that much, really. I, I didn't use these ones. So you, can, you, you don't have to use that one. If you want to do your own weight, if you I want. I just used the example. Oh, you did? Okay. Did anybody have to use their own weight and are we willing to give this to tell everybody? Okay. All right. Let's do 150 pounds then, all right? 150 divided by 2.2, enter. Okay. Now, uh, it says it's about 68.25. Whoops. I made a mistake here. My fault. I didn't clear it. I didn't clear my calculator. That was dumb. Six, oh, there's, um, there we go. It says 68, now, um, that would be in kilograms, right? So the 150 pound person is about 68 kilograms for everybody else in the world. Now let's put this in scientific notation. Even though I taught you how to do this without a calculator, let's do it with a calculator. All right, let's put that in there. And it changes to 68 now watch now, if I say round of three sig figs, is that one gonna stay there or is that number there gonna be big enough to change it? What do you think? If I say round of three sig figs, you do look at the fourth one. The fourth one is five or higher. Eight is big enough to round that up to a two, isn't it? And then my calculator says E, it says E1. That means times 10 to the first. So when you, when you get certified, I'll have you write everything in scientific notation with three sig figs. If you go around the world, though, and you're just talking to people, you just say, yeah, I'm about 68 kilograms. You get that? All right. Now you're doing pretty well so far. Are you, getting, are you getting a little bit of the hang of this? Okay, let's do one a little harder. You ready to do a little harder one? Okay, this is called type one. Let's do a type two. Now, type 2 is exactly like type 1, except it's going to take more than one conversion factor. Go ahead. So, on the, like, on the quiz, are you going to get all of the conversions? You mean equivalents? Yeah. I will give you the equivalents. You have to decide whether or not you use 1 kilogram over 2.2 pounds or reverse, right? And you just do that by watching the labels. Now, uh, there's a catch. There's a catch. I will give you, if you don't remember how many inches are in a foot, I'll tell you. You know how many feet in a mile? I'll tell you. I'll tell you about kilograms and pounds. I'll tell you. You know which ones I won't tell you? Because we spent a lot of time in class on them. Which ones I'm not going to tell you? Ten. Powers of 10. I'm not going to do it. Now, I'll tell you the ones I use almost all the time. One meter equals what? 100 centimeters? Yes. One uh, kilogram equals what? How many grams? You can't just sit there, okay? I, isn't kilo me a thousand? So, now, I'll tell you how I know this is true because how can a little thing equal a big thing? Give me a lot of little things. You get it? The big number is always goes to the little unit. You get that? And the other one might be used one kilometer equals how many meters? See, those, those are the ones I use the most often in powers of 10. And don't tell me you can't remember those. Yes? Uh, when's this we, we'll have a quiz probably, um, probably on Thursday or Friday. Uh, we'll see how it goes. If anything goes well, you'll have a chance to get um, work on a, home, a worksheet. You'll get a chance to be certified. And if you're certified, say, so well, then why can't I just take a quiz? I, I should be able to do well in the quiz. So you'll get, you'll get a lot of points this week just on factor label. And I, I want you, that will boost your grade if you can do well. Okay, type two. Um, uh, okay, I got it. I can do it. Uh, I was at the hospital the other day. Uh, not really, but I just thought I'd make that up. And, and I was, I was going to go look at the babies, you know, and they let you go look at the babies. They don't really let you look at them anymore. But, but I look at this baby, and they said that there was a five-hour-old baby and I said, wow, wow, that baby's only five hours old. And, and being a scientific mind like you are, I'm sure you would have asked the same question to me as I did. How many centuries old is that baby? 
Yeah, that's what I want to know. A five-hour-old baby is how many centuries old? Isn't that what you would ask? All right, what's type? What's uh? What's step one? What's step one? Everybody, hurry, let's go. Write the given. Give write down. Oh, excellent. Write down a given. Five hours over one. Everybody in this room should be able to do that right there without any help. You got that? Now, do you, am I going to give you the equivalent of hours and centuries? No, I'm not. So now what are you going to do? I don't want you doing any side calculations. No. I want this to be so easy, you're going to want to use it. What's bigger than an hour that you do know? What's bigger than an hour that not centuries, that's too big. Do you know anything about hours in anything? Day? Let's do that. What do you know? And watch now. This, these better be equal. They better be equal to each other. One day is the same as what? If this equals this, you can use it. If it's not, you cannot use it. Now watch this. Oh, oh, oh. What am I into now? What label do I have left over? You don't press equals yet. What's the one I want? Centuries, right? All right, Zach, come on, look up here. So here's what we do. We had a conversion factor, didn't we? But guess what? We're not done. So what do we have to do? We're gonna build another conversion factor. What label has to go away? Now, do you know days and centuries? What do you know? What's bigger than a day that you do know? A year? Okay, now watch now. Did you know that one year is 365.25 days? Did you know that? It takes the Earth 365 days and a quarter, and a quarter of a day, another six hours before it gets to the same spot in space. Now, if you think about that, wait a minute. Every, what if it does that many years in a row? What happens to that quarter of a day? And I'll tell you what happens after four years. After four years, we don't want our calendars messed up. So we decide, hey, you know what? Um, every year we've been doing February 26, 27, 28, March 1st. You know what we do? But every four years, we don't. We say February 26th. 27, 28, February 29th. And that's called a leap year, isn't it? Matter of fact, it just happens to be that leap years are also election years for us. It just happened to be a coincidence, and this is a leap year, wasn't it? So anyway, uh, that's how, we, that's how that, that quarter of a day gets taken care of. We simply, it adds up to a whole day, doesn't it? So instead of calling the next day March 1st, we simply call it February 29th. You get that? And that year, we actually have 366 days in the year, don't we? Now, we're not done yet. I'm going to cancel that out. Look, you get points for doing that right there. Right there. See that? Am I done? Okay, so you know what we have to do. If we're not done, we build another conversion factor. Now, what about years and centuries? What do you think about that? What do you think? Isabella, you know about years and centuries? What do you know? Say it again. One century is 100 years. Now, notice that the only label I have that's not crossed out is centuries. That is the first time I write equals, and that's the first time I pick up my calculator. All right, now I want to show you how to do this. Be a big boy and girl, okay? You have to believe me. Believe me when I tell you this is how you actually do this, okay? All right, ready? Calculators ready? If it's in a numerator, you will multiply by it. If it's in a denominator, you will divide by it. I don't care how many numbers in a denominator, you will divide by those. We're not gonna mess with ones. So here's what you do, ready? Five divided by 24. What are you going to do? 5 
divided by 24, divided by 365.25. Say it. What are you going to do with that 100? Divide. You divide by 100. It's in the denominator. You have to divide by it if it's in the denominator. Now, if you already have your scientific notation mode on there, you know what that is. Uh, Roar, what do you have for your answer? You're going to round it to three sig figs. That's four figures. So the four is not the four is not big enough to make. All right. Is there an e somewhere? It's e negative six. Ah, e means times ten to the negative six. Everybody know that negative six, ten to the minus six is a millionth, isn't it? Did you know that baby was five point seven millionths of a century old? Five point seven millionths of a century old. Get it? Uh, factor type two is like factor one you just keep building conversion factors until you're done what do you think about that pretty easy or not okay all right we'll go just a little bit further on this all right let's do a type three okay now type three uh this is going to look different to you because let me show you what it looks like um 60 mph equals how many meters per second now watch carefully here okay in our country we like to say mph isn't it right and that what does that stand for miles per hour isn't that right and what's the wind speed uh, about 10 mph miles per hour well here's here's the problem with this and this is where you're gonna this is your first difficult one this is your first one that's difficult the given has 60 miles at the top. Now, I don't like it, but in the United States, we think MPH stands for miles per hour. But M, small m, actually stands for meters. So MI is actually miles. And what does per mean? Per means divided by. It's 60 miles per what? Now, you know what's weird about this? is that the given has a, a label in the top and a label in the bottom. He said, well, that, ooh, how do I do that? Watch now. You can do it. Just take care of one at a time. Get rid of miles in the top and replace it with meters. Get rid of hours in the bottom and replace it with seconds. Got it? All right, let's try it. Does it matter which one I attack first? It does not. It does not. See that hours down here? I don't want you down here. I want the final answer to have seconds in the bottom. How do you get rid of hours in the bottom, in the denominator? Multiply by a conversion factor that has hours where? Where does hours have to be now? Help me out. On the top. Okay, now, I eventually want to go to seconds. Now, here's a big mistake people make. They tell me one hour equals 60 seconds. That was true. This class had been over a long time ago, wouldn't it? One hour does not equal 60 seconds. What does it equal? I know that one hour equals 60 minutes. It was a coincidence that these are 60. Don't, don't look at that. This is true, isn't it? One hour, 60 minutes. Now, watch what I'm going to do here. Cancel. Cancel. Now, am I done? Look at the labels. This says I'm in miles per per minute. Am I done? No. I wanted meters per second. Next one. How do you get rid of minutes down here? Put it up here. Now, do you know minutes and seconds? Do you know the equivalents for minutes and seconds? Okay. Kyle, what do you think? Pretty easy? What do you got here? Who gets the one? Who gets the 60? Okay, so one minute is the same as 60 seconds. Now watch what I'm gonna cancel here. Now, am I done? No, you're in miles per second. Now, I'm gonna leave this guy alone because that's what I want in the bottom, isn't it? But now I gotta build another one. I'm gonna help you with this a little bit. Um, 
I know I have to get rid of miles, and that's going to be way over here, isn't it? Now, I'm not going to give you miles and minutes. Here's what I will give you. One inch equals 2.54 centimeters. I will tell you that. Okay, so let's try it. Uh, wow, this is English metric. English metric. Okay, you have to go. All right, so tonight, uh, before you come back, at least look over your notes and see if it makes sense to you. If you need to